the process of a hip replacement. So patients come into the um, hospital the day of surgery. Um, before surgery, uh, we try to really optimize patients' medical condition to try to get patients through the surgery as health, uh, successfully as possible. So try to meet certain uh, weight goals, um, optimize their health by seeing the primary care person. We've developed a preoperative testing center in conjunction, in conjunction with our anesthesia staff at Concord Hospital where we do some specialized tests to help limit complications. And so once they get to the day of surgery, um, they show up in the preoperative area, usually about an hour and a half to two hours before surgery, where we start some antibiotics uh, for patients intravenously. Um, patients then go into the operating room where they have anesthesia, whether it be a general anesthesia or a spinal anesthesia, where they're uh, numb sort of from the um, waist down. We make an incision, uh, typically about four to six inch incision. It's as long as it needs to be, but as short as we can make it. And again, with an anterior approach, go between uh, uh, some of the muscles rather than through them. Uh, what a hip replacement is, the ball that's damaged of the hip replacement is removed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a uh, titanium stem uh, about the size of a, about the length of a pen. Uh, which is fit very tightly into the tube of the thigh bone. The thigh bone's a tube, and so it's put in very tightly, so the bone will actually adhere to it or grow onto it over the course of a couple months. The the socket of the hip joint is surfaced, is uh, clean, so it's a smooth surface, and a titanium shell is fit very tightly into that socket. These titanium pieces, if you will, have uh, sort of a rough surface like an SOS pad on it, so the bone will actually grow into these porous uh, surfaces. I snap typically a plastic liner inside of that titanium shell, which becomes the new cushion, if you will. And then a new ball snaps onto that stem and the thigh bone, uh, whether it be a metal or ceramic ball. And so the new hip joint then becomes a metal or ceramic ball that rubs across a plastic liner, and that becomes the new hip joint. So accidents happen uh, with, uh, you know, whether you've had a hip replacement or a knee replacement or not. And if you're skiing or walking or you have a fall, you know, most likely, more likely than not, if you just have a fall from a standing height, nothing's going to happen. But if it's a more high energy impact skiing or you fall just right, fractures can occur around uh, hip replacements or knee replacements. And those are problems. Um, Typically, uh, the way we manage it is sometimes the bone will break around the implant or far enough away from it where the implant is still solidly adhered to the bone. And in those instances, um, more often than not, we'll treat uh, these fractures with surgery where we repair the bone uh, and let that heal over time with surgery, with, whether it be a plate and screws or uh, rod or what have you. Uh, and in other instances where the implant has been jarred loose from the bone and it's loose, then that requires a revision surgery where the implant that was initially there needs to be removed and then a different uh, implant is put into the, to the bone to start the process over again. And those are bigger surgeries. Other things that can happen in addition to fractures with a hip replacement is something called a dislocation where the ball that's in the socket uh, can become dislodged. Uh, from the socket. And in those instances, it's painful. The leg is typically shortened and twisted either out or in. Patients typically can't walk on it. Uh, it's a trip to the emergency room and more often than not, uh, under some sedation or muscle relaxation, it's able to be manipulated back into position. Um, more often than not, it does not require surgery, but once the dislocation happens, then the tissues get stretched out and it's more likely to happen again. And if it becomes a recurrent issue over time, then it may result in further surgery.